part of the financial crisis is in fact related to this, and I'm going to come to that in a moment. Now, the financial crisis is the consuming issue of our time. And in fact, on my BlackBerry today, I got an email from another country saying that their current estimates are that interest rates must stay low for at least the next five years to try and make some adjustments. So people are now starting to think that things around the corner may well be wrong. And I'm going to come to some of this in my talk. Now, the main issue I want to talk about is that this crisis that we're dealing with was not caused by reality. It was not caused by the normal economic world that we're used to. It was caused by bubbles. It was caused by something out of the ordinary. And those that profited identified it, and those that didn't were swept along with the tide. Now, some of the factors behind the bubbles were a liquidity bubble. The amount of money that had put, been put into circulation by central banks uh, in many countries had grown enormously since the year 2000. And there were reasons for that. But normally when governments put money into the system, they take it out again, they try and manage it. But a lot of liquidity was built up over the year 2000 with the fear of some of the, the uh, computer problems. After 9-11, central banks pumped money into the system. Then there was the technology uh, problems and the more money was pumped into the system. Alan Greenspan, as was said, when the markets got into difficulty, he pumped more money into the system. So we had liquidity bubbles. That's not a good way to run a financial system. Well, when there's too much money chasing the same amount of goods, you have other types of bubbles. We had housing bubbles, not particularly in Canada. I don't think Canada was in fact a, a, a serious problem in this area, but certainly in the United States and in the United Kingdom, uh, in Spain, and to some extent in Australia, these were very serious, very serious bubbles. And in the United States, they were made worse by some regulatory failures. And then we had commodity bubbles. We've seen in Canada many raw materials and oil going from uh, modest prices three, four years ago to incredible prices and then back down again. And then, to make all of this worse, we had incredible complexity. People were designing financial products that you needed a PhD in mathematics to analyze. Clearly, clearly the world had diverged from the path of rationality to a point that uh, financial market values were being uh, priced based upon things that were, were not endurable. So, neither the bubbles in champagne nor the bubbles in financial markets last forever. When the music stops, the headache and the hangover begin. Now, my worry, and it's a serious worry, is that the crisis will be worse than the 1930s. And, and that was mentioned earlier as well. And I think it's, it's worse for a number of reasons. One, in the 1930s, you had a, essentially a mismanaged banking crisis, and you had a stock market crisis. But the stock market crisis relative to the economy was smaller, wealth was not widely distributed, and you didn't have a lot of pension funds and mutual funds and other asset type investments uh, to cause losses. So today, the pain of this crisis has been felt by far more, far more people and far more asset classes and far more businesses. But then there are connections also to what economists call the real economy. And that is stock market prices and housing prices are used as collateral. People pledge securities, they pledge houses to borrow money. When the value of your collateral falls, you can't borrow as much. Not only that, you'll find the bank calling on you, looking for money when the collateral isn't there to support the loans. Complexity we talked about, and I won't, won't bore you with more discussions about that. Another big difference from the 1930s today is that the economy is incredibly networked. All of the pieces fit together in the economy globally like a big jigsaw puzzle. 
And this is why many of the actions taken by governments have been designed not because you couldn't afford to see somebody fail, but because of the connections to other bodies where those links were just too important to cause greater losses. Globalization. Will people look back in 20 years and say this was the failure of globalization? You had what was essentially a crisis that started in US housing markets 